Hello, I am that British guy and welcome. Now what I wanted to do today was a WWE Tube pay-per-view edition focusing on Great Balls of Fire. But after looking at the WWE YouTube channel, all of the videos relating to Great Balls of Fire are all about a minute, two minutes long and focus on the middle of the matches. So I wasn't able to get a very good idea of how the matches went down and what any of the finishes were based on what they'd uploaded on their YouTube channel. So I'm not able to do that, unfortunately. So what I have decided to do is just give a quick run through of the pay-per-view. I managed to get a few highlights here and there off of various videos and just give sort of a recap as to what my predictions were and how I did with them really. So very quickly starting off at the pre-show match, Neville versus Akira Tozawa, very nice looking match. Neville looked very dominant and managed to pick up the win there and I believe Akira Tozawa later had words with Titus O'Neil about wanting a rematch and it would be quite nice to see what more these guys could do in the ring together because it was quite a nice structured match. Both guys look really good and Neville very, very strong and I don't think he's going to be giving up that Cruiserweight Championship for a very, very long time to come. The pay-per-view starts proper with Bray Wyatt versus Seth Rollins and very early on Wyatt looked very vicious. Um, after a few hope spots from Seth Rollins, he managed to claw his way back into the match and nearly put Bray Wyatt away, but he managed to overcome... The odds, a uh, little bit of heelish tactics with a thumb to the eye and Sister Abigail finishing Seth Rollins off. The build, as I said before in my predictions video, was a really poor build. But this match certainly exceeded expectations. Um, I think that might be mainly because the expectations were so low. Hopefully if they manage to actually hang some story and character development on these two guys going forward they could have a nice little program running into SummerSlam and this very good match can be built upon there. Was actually really pleased to see Bray Wyatt win. I didn't see it coming because I thought that the WWE had put a lot of stock in Seth Rollins. So it will be interesting to see where that goes. I can't see Bray Wyatt winning the feud but it was very nice to be proven wrong here and for him to get the victory. Enzo versus Cass. Now Enzo got a very big promo section at the beginning and really putting him over with the crowd. However, once Cass came out, he absolutely annihilated Enzo. Enzo managed to get a couple of really quick hits in on Big Cass, but he basically floored him right from the off and it was a complete mugging, throwing him about one big boot to the head and he managed to put him away. The commentators were going on and on about a one and done thing and I think that makes sense really because I can't really see how Enzo can get one up over on Cass realistically and to have him keep facing Cass and losing would just completely bury him. So hopefully he moves on to something else and Cass moves on as well from Enzo and they can both build from this. Now while I certainly predicted the outcome to be very different to this, I was thinking that it was going to be more sort of Cass getting himself disqualified by battering Enzo outside of the ring, getting counted out or bringing a steel chair in. As it happens, it didn't come to that. He was able to just batter him about in a standard sort of match and managed to pick up the win. Um, but as I said, that was more going to be Cass losing rather than Enzo winning. So... Although the outcome wasn't quite what I thought would happen, because Enzo got his promo at the beginning, he was still able to get over with the crowd. So they kind of used that instead of a empty victory, if you like, for Enzo to get over with the crowd as well as Big Cass dominating him. Next up, we have the tag team Iron Man match between the Hardys and Sheamus and Cesaro. Very, very quick first fall after the Brogue kick, 1 0 to the champions. And they then completely dominated the Hardys for the next sort of 10 minutes and managed to pick up a second point. After a sort of traditional tag move, the, the hot tag gets the Hardys back in and they manage to hit all their signatures and finishing moves in order to get one point back to bring it back to 2-1. The champions then 
sort of counteracted this and managed to get back on top. They sort of fought off the hardies and saved quite a few pinfalls before managing to swing the momentum back their way and get the count back to uh, 3-1 via a count out. And this actually led them to really, really get back into the match in full swing. And if it wasn't for a quick double team moment from the Hardys managing to get the score back up to 3-2, the champions may have run away with it there and then, but Hardys managed to peg them back to 3-2. Then we got sort of Jeff's spots, almost like from a hot tag again, getting all of his big moves in. This then allowed... Matt to take control and he hit a twist of fate off of the top rope on Sheamus to level it up at 3-2. The Hardys then went hell for leather at Sheamus and Cesaro and after a swanton bomb it looked like Jeff was then planning on rolling into the pin but Cesaro as a legal man managed to cover Jeff while he was still on the mat and still that last victory. Then there was the little cat and mouse moment, Cesaro running away. Jeff manages to get his own twist of fate in on him, but the timer runs out just as he's pinning him for for all. So again, not quite what I predicted. I thought we were just about going to get that last pinfall or submission in before the timer ran out to get ourselves to a tie and make the champions retain that way. Played out quite similar to that because they managed to steal a very late point and then run the timer out. I thought it was very, very well constructed. A very, very good match overall considering that most people in the crowd were sort of really only getting invested in the last sort of five, ten minutes because obviously that was when all the, the big things were going to be happening in the ring. Next up, we had the women's match, Sasha Banks versus Alexa Bliss for the Raw Women's Championship. And very good heel tactics, especially early on from Alexa Bliss, rolling out when she's feeling threatened, faking her injury on her weird double-jointed arm, and using that to get the advantage. Sasha Banks then tries to get the bank statement in, but Alexa manages to get to the ropes and again tries to escape. And it's only Sasha pulling her back into the ring that keeps the match going. It's then very even between the two of them. Sasha manages to sort of get more on top of the match at that point. And then after another bank statement attempt, Alexa Bliss manages to get herself out of the ring and just takes the count out loss. So as I predicted, Sasha managing to get the win, but Alexa Bliss keeping hold of the title. And that was clearly her main goal throughout this match. This leads in very nicely to a rematch between the two of them at SummerSlam, which I think Sasha will probably come out on top there. I see title match between Miz and Ambrose, and it was an okay match. They've certainly had better, but they've had worse. Constant distractions by Maurice and the Miz Taraj, and at the beginning, Ambrose basically tries to take them head on and manages to beat them down a little bit, but the Miz manages to target Dean Ambrose's knee after a little while and although Ambrose is fighting through this more hill tactics by Maurice and the Miztourage distracting him wherever possible they even manage to pull Dean Ambrose out of the ring at one point when he does his rebound off the ropes and then after Curtis Axel sort of sacrifices himself Bo Dallas hits Dean Ambrose from behind leads straight into a skull-crushing finale, and The Miz retains the IC title with a lot of help from all three of his allies outside the ring. And again, this pretty much followed how I predicted it. A lot of interference by Maurice and The Miz Taraj, and The Miz coming out on top. And I definitely think he needs to hold on to the IC title at least until Survivor Series, and batter away a few more contenders, certainly move on from Dean Ambrose, and Dean Ambrose needs to move on to something as well, because this whole thing's got very, very stale now, because we saw this over on SmackDown, and we've seen it since they both come over to Raw, so I think this needs to end now, please. The ambulance match between Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns was just like watching a car crash, to be honest. Strowman absolutely dominating Reigns, throughout most of the match. Granted, Reigns got a few bits in later on and was attacking Strowman with the chair, but Strowman not even showing any effects of that, completely no-selling it and slamming Reigns about across the stage, into the sign, 
into the ambulance again off of the stage so that he fell down the side. Strowman tried to slam Reigns actually on the stage floor and Reigns managed to fight out of it and actually push Strowman through a screen. Kind of built himself up, got all the momentum back on his side and then one missed spear straight into the back of the ambulance. So it was quite evenly booked. It was more a victory for Strowman because of a miscalculation by Reigns rather than Strowman sort of outright winning. But Strowman was able to, at times, completely dominate Roman Reigns. And again, as I predicted, Strowman coming out on top. He did then get thrown in the back of the ambulance by Roman Reigns, who then reversed him into a truck and put him basically out for the count. But Strowman managing to break out of there and exit under his own weight builds him up in the strongest possible way. And if this doesn't make him the number one contender for the Universal title for SummerSlam, I'm not really sure what does because he had an excellent match. He's had a brilliant feud with Reigns as well and managed to come out on top here. Brilliant, brilliant work by Braun Strowman. Sort of during all that backstage stuff, Heath Slater and Kurt Hawkins had a match. So that was nice. Main event, Brock Lesnar versus Samoa Joe for the Universal title. And although Paul Heyman said before this wasn't going to be Suplex City F5-1-2-3, it kind of was building towards that and that's pretty much how the match ended. Samoa Joe managed to get Lesnar in the Kikina clutch a couple of times, but Lesnar manages to fight out. There was a nice spot where Lesnar was about to get Samoa Joe up for the F5 and Samoa Joe actually counted it into the Kikina clutch, which was really, really nice. And that was sort of the closest that Lesnar came to losing. But overall... I think it kind of suffered from its own hype. It's kind of the polar opposite of the Wyatt Rollins match that had absolutely no build that was a really good match. This had the perfect build and whether the match was too short or it was just not really filled with anything other than a few German suplex spots and let's try and get the Kikina clutch on Lesnar a few times and then the F5 pin finish kind of felt like it needed more Samoa Joe came out of the blocks very, very well at the beginning, slamming Lesnar about and putting him through the announce table. But it, that was never really developed on letting him then get back in the ring under his own power and not really going to town on Lesnar and throwing him in the ring and trying to get a quick pin. I think would have been a better way to build that. But there we go. They obviously felt like they needed to keep Lesnar as strong as possible. So they didn't want him to get absolutely decimated by Samoa Joe. Be interesting to see what they do do with Samoa Joe going forward with this because if rumours are to be believed he's not going to be in the title picture come SummerSlam but I certainly think the build to Great Balls of Fire he's definitely done enough to be considered a main contender for the Universal title if not at SummerSlam certainly shortly after it. I really hope he doesn't get forgotten about because he has done an exceptional job in the lead in to this match just a shame about the match itself and again as predicted it's fairly obvious one with this one it was Lesnar's first title defense he couldn't really lose it could he it's a shame for Samoa Joe because I think against any other opponent going in the way he was going into this match it would have been nice to see him win but unfortunately Lesnar was never going to lose his first title defense since getting the belt at Wrestlemania 33 so here is the card in full and here are my predictions and whether I got them right or wrong. As you can see, I managed to get five predictions correct. And although Sheamus and Cesaro, I predicted that match was going to be a draw, I did have a feeling that they were going to walk away with the titles, and they did. And the Enzo and Cass complete annihilation of Enzo kind of called that set up. There wasn't really any other way to book it, to be honest. So... Really, based on my predictions, the only thing I got wildly wrong, I would say, is the Bray Wyatt and Seth Rollins match. And to be honest, for the sake of Bray Wyatt and his character and his build, I'm pleased I got that wrong. That was more based on what they've done with him recently. So it's nice to see him hopefully now get on the up and up. And that was a quick roundup of the Great Balls of Fire pay-per-view and how my predictions tallied in with it. 
How did you do in your predictions yourself? Did you manage to predict more matches than me correctly? Please let me know in the comments below. I will be back, of course, later in the week with WWE Tube looking at Raw and SmackDown as normal. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe to the channel and you can also find me on Facebook or follow me on Twitter at Rightly Wrongly. Finally, before I go, I am thinking of doing another booking video. Just looking through my videos, that's clearly the most popular one of the videos that I've posted so far. If you've got any particular ideas of what you want me to book, please let me know. I've got a couple of ideas myself, but I'd like to hear what you've got to say. I will leave a link to my Facebook page in the description below because I've actually started a post on there. So if you want to leave comments either on this video or my other videos or ideally on the Facebook post so that all the comments are together, that would be great. And I will get that uploaded as soon as possible. I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>